and to worship the Lord. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome every one of you today into the house of God. It is the best place I, as I could say. It is good to worship him, Amen. express yourself, and magnify the Lord. The Lord is good. And his mercies endure it forever. Hallelujah. And I uh, want to welcome all the Facebook listeners. I say that thank God for you. You're being a great encouragement to me and to my family and to the church. And so God bless you really good. Today... We are going to have our communion service. So in a little while, we will have our communion. I want to tell you a little about our services on Sunday at this time, 10 o'clock, is our worship service. On Tuesday is our Bible, our prayer meeting on Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Wednesday at 7 is our Bible study on the book of Galatians. And Friday at 8 p.m. is our next Bible study on the scriptures. If you want to contact us, you can reach us at David Jow here at rogers.com or 416-567-5794. Praise the Lord. Before I read the scriptures, I uh, ask you to stand with me. And uh, we will partake of the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he break it and give thanks unto the Lord. I said, this is my body, as often as you reach, uh, you must partake of it. And likewise, like one manner, he took the cup. I said, this is the new covenant. This is my blood. And he take it and drink it. I said, do likewise. And they partook of the cup. Now, the bread represents his body. This is the body of Jesus. The body is broken for us. The body is what carry all our sicknesses, our disease, our faults. So today, as we partook or partake of the Lord's body, let us realize he carried all your sicknesses. The cup represents his blood shed for the remission of our sins. 
as we partake of the cup, let us remember he shed his blood for us. At this time, I'm going to ask Sister Angela to pray for the emblems. Thank you that you have given us the strength and that this blood that is bread that you specified because of you we can have partake in the body of Christ. Father, we are thanking you this morning, O oh God, that you blessed us as we partake and we eat and drink of your blood and your bread. Father, we thank you for this emblem that you have given to us. And Father, we all bless it and that it will satisfy our needs and our wants, O oh God. And we pray, O oh God, that you will be with us and you will guide us and you will be our strength. And Father, because of you who was crucified, died and rose again, that we can be able to partake of this emblem. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks. We give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I speak to your body. I say, body, in the name of Jesus, be made whole. Let us partake of the bread. Let us... Take the cup. Like manner, he took the cup. Let us partake of the cup. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, in Jesus' name, let your anointing flow through the service. I speak the blood of Jesus against the works of the enemy. I release your anointing against every yoke, against every burden. I release your anointing to speak and to teach. And so right now, in Jesus' name, let your anointing be upon us and bring us to the place where we learn from you and know you and understand the word of God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Would somebody praise the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Would somebody give thanks to the Lord? Would somebody say, Thank you for healing me. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Lord, forgive us. Cleanse us. Wash us. Make us all today in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. You may have your seat. Um... Let's just go to a scripture reading. Jesus answered John 4, 13 and 14. 
Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Yes, I drink of some and realize I will thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water I shall give him shall never thirst again. But the water I shall give him shall be in him. Say the water, the water shall be in us. A well of water springing up into everlasting life. So whatsoever Jesus was speaking of, he was not speaking of this water. Because I drink it and I got to drink it again. But the water he was speaking of, you won't thirst. It will be everlasting. A spring of living water. Hallelujah. So here we find Jesus was speaking to the woman at the well. Now, we go to the place where he's speaking to the next person. And that is Nicodemus. And the wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the song of it. But you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now again, we see something strange. The first one, the woman that he spoke to, you drink the water, that is everlasting water. Springs of remove water, and you won't thirst again. And here is the wind. That is the wind. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. The wind is like the Spirit of God within us. Everyone who is born of God. Hallelujah. Now, Ecclesiastic. Just as you do not know the path of the wind and how bones are formed in the womb of the pregnant woman, so you do not know the activity of God who makes all things. Now we see uh, he uses wind again and he uses wind as the work of God. The work of God there's like a mystery that we do not know how the bones are formed and how the pregnant woman bring forth a child. How is it bones are formed in her? And then Ecclesiastic, uh, Ezekiel, then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, 
Thus saith the Lord of hosts, or the Lord God, Come from the four corners, O breath, O breath, and breathe upon the slain, and they shall come alive. Here we find that the breath of God, the wind of God, has got power to give life. And now I come to the scripture that we will speak of today. But the anointing, say the anointing, the anointing. which is, which you have received. From him abides in you. Now anointing. And where is the anointing? Becky? In me. In you. And what it does? It abides. Say the anointing, the anointing. abides Abides. in me. How many of you know you have the anointing? How many of you know that you are an anointed? The problem is, am I anointed? Yes. Am I releasing this anointing? Am I activating the anointing. Hallelujah. And you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the anointing teaches you concerning all things. So I find here the anointing is what? A teacher? The anointing is a teacher. And it's true. And it's not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Now this anointing becomes a him. So, who is that the anointed? A person. Who is the anointed? He abides in you. Who is the anointed? The anointing is the one that brings the truth to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, today, I would like to speak to you on the anointing flowing in and through you. But first of all, we need to know what is the anointing. And so as a Christian, many times, We want to know what is the anointing. And we say, he's anointed. We look at the brother. We look at the preacher. He's mighty. He's anointed. Is he really? When we say he's anointed, are we speaking of something that he has in him? Are we speaking of a thing or something that is alive in that person? So if I say you have the anointing, am I speaking of something that is in you? Or a person that is in you? The anointing is a person. Say that. 
The anointing is a person. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. Confirming the word with signs falling. So when they went, they went and they preached. As they preach, the Lord confirmed the words and so signs follow them. Was the word living? Yes. What was in the word? The anointing. Hallelujah. Say the anointing. The anointing. He wants to work with us. But we first have to learn how to work with him. The Holy Spirit is that anointing. And he is within us. And we have to learn to work with the anointing. We have to learn to work with the Holy Spirit. He abides in you. Hallelujah. 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 The best place to start. Is with Jesus. Who spoke. Of his anointing. So how did. How does this anointing work. We got to look at somebody who really has the anointing. Somebody who show forth the living substance that is the anointing. And the only person and the perfect person that I could think about is Jesus Christ. And he shows in the book of Luke, chapter 4, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Can you say I was certain that you have the Spirit Spirit of God upon you. Now Christ Jesus took up the prophet Isaiah and he read and as he was reading he was prophesying and as he was reading he said that this is a fulfillment of who I am. The Spirit of God is upon him. The might of God is upon him. Because he has anointed me. So the Spirit of God rests and abides within him. Because he is what? Anointed. Now, what are some of the, the fruit or the blessing of this anointing upon Christ? To preach the gospel to the poor. Send me to heal. The broken hearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. And set at liberty those that are oppressed. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So when the anointing comes upon you and is within you, the anointing does 
something in and through your life. Hallelujah. The anointing works within you to bless others. Hallelujah. The anointing flow within you to reach other people. So the anointing is not something that is selfish. The anointing is alive. The anointing is powerful. The anointing causes you to preach, to heal the broken heart, to set at liberty the captives, and to, to set oppressed free, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So the anointing is something strong. Every man and woman of God who has been mightily used by God is a person who has humble, who has what? Humble himself or themselves before God. Press, press, say press. press. Press into his presence and allow him to do a work in their heart. The thing is, is God working in you now? Is he alive within you? Are you allowing God to do a work within you. One of the things that you have to learn is to humble yourself. Hallelujah. You know, this past week I used to think of, I had a pastor who was very, very strict. Well, good for him. And good for me too. Because I grew up in the church and in the environment that I can learn and behave myself. And he was very strict. And so Elin used to say, the man strict, yes. He's strict. All of us have to learn to obey. We have to learn to humble ourselves when we come and do the work of the Lord. And there is a certain fear that he drives during that time. I want to say the strictness and the fear is not a man, but the strictness and the fear is towards God. You got to look at God. You got to reverend God. You got to respect God. And believe God. I don't want you to fear me. As a pastor. No, 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 no. But I believe. When I go before God. I have to humble myself. Humble myself. And to do the will of God. Please him, hallelujah. And so one thing you will find is that the anointing comes upon us when we are humble, when we are ready to be used by him, hallelujah. This anointing is available to everyone who hungers. Say hunger. Those who desire to be used of God are burning desire. So if you want to be used, you will have the hunger, hunger within you. And that hunger within you will drive you. Say drive. Yeah. Will drive you to do the will of God. To do the purpose of God. And to do that purpose. 
You need somebody to help you. And that is the anointing. The Lord wants everyone to be touched by his power and anointed by the Spirit of God. So right now as I preach to you, I say to you, God wants to use you. Shook, God wants to use you. God don't want you to sit on a prophet's arrow like that boy. <laughs> God want to use you. God want to, to, to do something good in your life. A mighty written you. You might say you come to church to support Becky. That's good. But Becky needs you to. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she needs you. So I want to tell you today, the Lord wants to use everyone. He wants to use me. He wants to use you. Now what is the anointing? The anointing is the manifest presence of God. The anointing is the manifest presence of God. It, it is the manifest presence of the Lord. Or you can say, it is the presence and power of God manifesting within you. The presence and power of God manifesting within you. Hallelujah. Now the question is, am I allowing God to manifest himself in me? Am I making myself available to God so that he could manifest himself in and through me? Hallelujah. Now God wants to manifest himself, hallelujah, in me. See that. God wants to manifest himself in me. He wants to manifest himself in me. How? How? By his anointing. By his presence. By his truth. Not lies. By his, by his glorious anointed presence he wants to manifest himself in and through you hallelujah hallelujah every born again believer is anointed of god when the holy spirit comes to live inside of us so Every person who is a Christian has the anointed, anointing in them. Becky has the anointing, so is Angela, so is Davine, so is Samuel. The anointing is in me. The anointing must grow, say grow. Grow with me. And for the, that anointing to grow, the environment of my life has to be favorable for it to grow. Hallelujah. 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 A, for a plant to grow, and to grow up well and to bring forth fruits 
I must say that plant has to get water, has to get sunlight, has to get air. And so I will look at it and watch over it and feed it. And if there's any weed coming or not coming around it, I will pluck out the weed and let that plant grow. Now think of your life. Your life has the anointing in it. But why is it sometimes it's hard to recognize the anointing? Why is it hard to recognize God within me? Why is it not something natural that God is moving in me. The problem is that I don't create an environment, say environment, that is suitable for the growth of the anointing. So what will make my life more anointed. I will do that later. But one of the things that I must emphasize here is the Word of God. Say the Word of God. Word of God. You see, the Word of God, as I'm teaching on Friday nights, is the anointed Word of God. The Word of God came out of the breath of God. Hallelujah. Say that. The Word of God came out of the breath of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the breath of God is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And that Holy Spirit is the anointing. Hallelujah. Every question is anointed. But not all Christians, not all Christians allow the Holy Spirit to prosper in them. Not all Christians allow the Holy Spirit to prosper within us. Even as I'm speaking right now, Jesus said, the saw went forth and he sowed the seeds. Some fall upon the stony ground. Some fall upon turns, with turns. Some fall in the pathway. And some fall upon good ground. The question is, where is the anointing? Where is the anointing falling? Where is him falling? Are you running him out? Running him out? Are you bitter? Are you unforgiving? Do you carry a mind that is hard towards the Holy Spirit? Well, those are things that we have to look at and decide whether we want to grow or not to grow. Or whether we want to be a half-hearted Christian 
are a full out Christian. Hallelujah. But the anointing which you have received abides within you. The anointing is living within you. And you need not to have anybody teaching you. But as the anointing teaches you concern all things that is true. All things that is true. So I have to examine anything that I believe, they believe. Anything that I believe, is it true? Anything in your Christian life is that you believe, is it true? Anything that you confess, is it true? So for you to grow and for that anointing to grow within you, shoot plays a vital factor in your life. See that? Truth plays a vital factor in my life. Am I going to allow truth to prevail? Or am I going to allow a lie to prevail? May I say here, there are many things as a child of God growing up. I was never perfect and still I am not perfect in the sight of God. And so I have to be corrected. And daily as I read the word of God, I am corrected. And the word of God speak to me. I have to change. I have to be transformed. Because there's a lot of lies that the devil has put inside of my life. And some of those things that I live and the traditions that I had were lies. They were not the truth. As we could see Saul, he thought he was religious. He thought he was perfect. He thought he was doing the best thing. But God had to change Saul by converting him from the religious Pharisee, the stubborn man he was. God had to bring him to the place where he yield to the Lord. That is why we now could look at Saul that became Paul. And his life and his word wrote half or more than half of the New Testament. Why? Because he was corrected. He yielded to correction. He yielded to the anointing. And he allowed the anointing to teach him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God calls you, he gives you his grace. He empowers you. He enables you. He anoints you. And he equips you to do the job. God called me to preach. I have to yield to the grace of God. I have to be empowered by him. 
have to be allowing myself to be enabled to do the work of a preacher as a teacher. How do I allow myself? I have to study. I have to get the Bible daily and look into it. I have to get books that's written by the Bible and I have to equip myself for the work. Hallelujah. So don't you believe that God is not concerned about you. So God is concerned about your life. He graces you. He empowers you. He enables you. He anoints you. He equips you. What you believe you're getting now, you get the empower. You get an equip. You get them taught. The thing is, the thing is, am I, am I allowing myself to be taught? Am I allowing myself to be equipped? Am I allowing myself to be empowered? Hallelujah. So the fall lies within me. I could make a decision to be anointed or not to be anointed. Hallelujah. But that anointing is provided to you. Hallelujah. This is essential. This is essential for you to know when God calls you to something. He will, he will never call you to something he has not empowered you to. So whether you be a pastor, a teacher, evangelist, you have an anointing for that. Whether you are called to sing, there is an anointing to, to, to sing. I'm going to ask Becky this question. Becky, do you feel the anointing when you sing? Yeah, I do. You do? You feel a strength isn't that so? You feel something flowing out of you. And it wasn't until I received the full anointing that I was able to sing. Yes, that's it. I never could have sing before. Good, good, good testimony, good testimony. You have to get the spirit in the fullness. You have to spend time, take time. With the Spirit. And say, Lord, I want to be used. I want to be used. And if you want to be used, you're going to make yourself available. Available to be used. Hallelujah. 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 You will be a blessing. Anytime God calls you to do something, your anointing will bring Jesus to the room. And every single time, the devil will have to run. So when you come here to sing or to preach, or whatsoever you come to do, God anoints you to do it. Whether you have to pray, God anoints you to do that. Hallelujah. There's a living, say living, and there's a living substance within you. That is why 
my Christianity is not a still Christianity. That is why I find pleasure to do what I'm doing. That is why I spend hours with the Lord, with His Word, because I realize it's only in Him and Him alone that that anointing can flow to the full strength and bring deliverance and bring healing and feed people. I can't do it. I need that anointing. And every time I come here, I say, Lord, anoint me. I need the anointing. I need to see the devil run. Even as I speak right now, there's a devil that wants to stop me. But I say no. You know, when I came back to preach, I never came back perfect. But all this time, I yield myself. I yield myself. And allow God to do a work within me. A work that no man could do, but only God. And so right now, as I speak to you, I, I know that anointing is upon me. I feel within my hand that anointing. I feel numbness. I feel the tinkling sensation of him when I preach. And so I know God is God. And God is alive. And God is doing the work. I will have to close here. I'll have to close here for today and continue next week. You are a child of God. And I want you to know that you are called. And as a called child. You are anointed. Say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. And you are anointed. And that anointing is a living substance. It is a living person within you. That will do wonders within you. The question, am I going to allow him? To work through me. Am I going to allow him. To work through me. Am I going to dilly dolly. And do rubbish. And spend time. In things that are not so supposed to. And allowing myself to be carried away by winds of doctrine and teaching and people. Am I going to allow myself to receive of the Holy Spirit? You make the choice. I will never force you. You are the one. See, I'm the one that has to make that choice. You see, God gave us a choice. God gave to Adam a choice. Am I going to make that choice? Am I going to be a blessing? Let us pray. 
Hallelujah. 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 Father, I spoke in your word. Your word is anointed. Your word is anointed of the Spirit. And in that word is the living substance of you. Within your word is divinity, is life. And I speak the word to the people who have heard. And I release the word of deliverance. I release the word of salvation. I release the word of healing. And so God today make me a vessel. Make me a vessel. That will be used by you. And so that you can bend me, make me, mold me, fashion me. By your anointing. And cause me to do what is right. To live the truth and to walk the truth. And the truth alone. And I will know the truth. And the truth will set me free. So God today. Give me strength. To perform. Your will. Like you said. In thy word. The spirit. Spirit of God is upon me. And so like every Christian, we can say the Spirit of God is upon us. Because he has anointed me. He has anointed us. And so today, oh God, I pray that your anointing will come upon us. And will come mightily upon us. And your anointing will be upon us to preach, to teach, to speak the word of God. The anointing will be upon us to heal the brokenhearted, to open blind eyes, to speak the word. To set at liberty the oppressed and proclaim, proclaim the acceptable year. Lord, help us to live in obedience. Obedience, obedience, obedience. I could hear the Lord. Crying out to you, obey. Obey the word. Obey. Obey. Hallelujah. 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 Don't allow yourself to be carried away. Trust. And obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit of God, speak. Spirit of God, speak. Hallelujah. 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 Let the allow the Spirit of God to speak to you. Allow the Spirit of God 
to speak to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Spirit of God, speak. 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 Let us take up today's offering and now. Uh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Remember, we are back here on Tuesday night. And uh, we are here to pray. Then on Wednesday for our Bible study. And, um, and Friday for Bible study. So God bless you. Until then, we reach again. Blessings. God bless.